Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining me this day in Bible Tract Echoes. My Bible is open to Matthew in chapter 15. Matthew in chapter 15, I would really encourage you to open your own copy of the Word of God and study God's Word with me right now. If that really is not possible, then please listen as we look at the Word of God that we might uh, help you to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. As uh, we come to Matthew 15 and uh, second major paragraph of the passage, we have a very practical uh, section, as I said. Uh, Let me begin by asking you this question. How great is your faith? How great is your faith? Now, very frankly, our faith is a very difficult thing to quantify. Well, if I could give you an example of a great faith and then use this example to lay our own lives alongside of and compare our life and our faith quotient alongside a person who has great faith, perhaps you and I can better grasp if our faith is great or poor or somewhere in between. We have a very practical passage of Scripture before us. As your Bible is getting open to Matthew 15, I would also encourage you to get a piece of paper and a pencil, some way to jot down our address. As I'm making this broadcast, we are in the throes of having people call in at the last minute asking for a very particular track that we have that they like to give out at the end of October uh, when in the United States of America we have this this time of trick-or-treating. We have a Halloween track that we uh, really gets used a lot. Well, we're glad to do that, but when people really wait and procrastinate getting a hold of us, it makes life difficult for both them and for us. I say all that to do this. If you are one that likes to give out gospel tracts during uh, the Christmas time and put in your Christmas cards and so on, it is not too early for you to be contacting and say, I'd like to have some tracts to put in my Christmas cards as you think about getting those done. Three of the tracts in front of me I would encourage you to use for that. One is called The Gift. Now, very frankly, this is the track that's most used at Christmas time of all the tracts we have. It has a present, a wrapped present on the cover, and it looks like a Christmas present, and it's simply called The Gift. You can see why that one would be used a lot at this point in time. Here's another one that's entitled, Have You Received God's Gift? Have you received God's gift? It would be a great track. And one more, our signature track, simply entitled The New Birth. Since Christmas time is a celebration of the birth of the Lord Jesus, having a track called The New Birth would certainly fit that. These would be great tracks. If you are going to be a person who sends out tracks during the Christmas time, do contact us uh, early. We get them to you in plenty of time that way. Now, at the end of the broadcast, our mailing address will be given. Let me right now give you just our telephone number. That way, if that's an easier method for you to use to get a hold of us, then you'll have it ready. Are you ready? Here we go. You can call us at area code 309-828-6888. One more time, that telephone number is area code 309-828-6888. Now, Matthew chapter 15, we're going to look at a story, a woman of great faith. Matthew 15, I begin reading at verse 21. It says this, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, Not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. 
And he answered and said, It is not right or meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, in today, tomorrow, it may spill to a third day, I'm not sure. We want to look at this, whole, this woman of great faith and ask this question, how can I know that my faith is great faith? We're going to see here five tests of faith that this woman's faith endured, and at the res, as a result of that, Jesus said, woman, you have great faith. I would like to be a person of great faith. My dear friend, would you like to be a person of great faith? Well, if you're a believer, let's lay ourselves and lay our faith life, our faith quotient alongside this lady and find out. I want to just come and see these things. Number one, I want us to see a true and actual example of great faith. Secondly, I want us to learn how to evaluate our own faith by this woman's example. And lastly, I want you and I want myself, frankly, to take some action designed to up upgrade my faith. In our office, we are upgrading some programs. We don't like doing it. It costs us money, but you know what? When we upgrade, we take the time to do that. Our ministry and our ability to function is better. I want my faith to be better. I want to function in greater faith. I may need to upgrade my faith. Now, as we come here, let me begin by just making some introductory remarks about, first of all, the description of this woman. This this description of this woman's faith is called great, but who was this woman? From the text, we know, first of all, where she lived. In verses 21 and 22, she was in the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. She was a woman of Canaan, of that very area. We know where she lived. She was a remnant. She was a person ethnically, of the remnant of the old Phoenician civilization. She was a Gentile. She was a pagan person, using the New Testament terms. She was a pagan, idol-worshiping person. That would have been her, her life as she was brought up. She would have known no different. She probably was involved in the occult. Now, I said occult. That means somehow or another she was involved in a form of worship that was worshiping satanic, uh, uh, Satan and satanic form of worship, probably of the uh, follower of Astarte if, because that was a strong impact in that area. Now, I say that because all things being equal, that's what she would have grown up being involved in. But you know what she possessed? She possessed great faith. Now, it is really amazing that a Gentile woman from a area that probably she was an occultist could end up being a woman of great faith. How does that happen? When we compare scripture to scripture, and I'm turning in my Bible right now to the gospel of Mark in chapter three, I mentioned this passage a few uh, a number of days ago as we were in Mar- Matthew chapter 12 about the man with the withered hand and how it got healed. But I I said that a number of Gentile people and people in some non-strong Jewish areas saw some of the mighty miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here in Mark chapter 3, we told uh, of a story again. Uh, This is a parallel passage of the man with the withered hand. He Jesus heals this man with the withered hand on the Sabbath day. And we're told this in verse 6 after Jesus does that miracle on the on the Sabbath day, verse 6 of Mark chapter 3, and the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, that's against Christ, how they might destroy him. But Jesus, notice, withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. But listen, who else is in this crowd? And from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. It is possible, it is very likely that this lady that approaches here in Matthew chapter 15, turning back there, saw some of the miracles that Jesus did. She knew that this was a great man. If if nothing else, he was a great prophet. She probably, due to the miracles, had either seen or heard. Now, 
I, I remind you of something else. She's a woman and not a man. You say, well, Brother Mark, that is very astounding. Well, frankly, I'm not all that smart, but I saw I look for the obvious. <laughs> she was a woman. I say all that because in this culture, it would have been more difficult for women to gather information than for men. But she has a daughter, so I ask, where was her husband? Was she, her husband dead? Was she divorced? Was she not married? Was her husband still in the occult and didn't believe and, and didn't care? Was he off at war? I don't know. But I do know this. This was a idol-worshipping pagan woman. That, that was her background. But here she is. She confronts Jesus Christ with her need. And in the process, Jesus said she was a woman of great faith. My friend, if she could be a woman of great faith, then I take great hope. Mark Smith can be a person of great faith. My friend, you can become a person, and you may already be a person of great faith. Our background does not get in the way of you and I becoming people of great faith. But she became a person of great faith because her faith passed five tests. We're going to look at them. Let me look at the first one here today. Test number one, her great faith endured the test of trouble. Uh, There she is here and her daughter is sick. I'm back here in Matthew chapter 15 and says in verse 22, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. I wonder how she got this demon in her. Probably she had been messing around in her mom's religion. She probably had been messing around in her mom's religion. Dear parent, if you're a parent listening to me, please hear what I say. You and I, I'm a parent, I'm a grandparent. You and I as parents and grandparents impact our children and grandchildren by our lives, either for good or ill. Our kids see our good traits and our bad traits. Oh, how I wish they would pick up at least some of my good traits, but it seems that our kiddos pick up our bad traits traits so much more quickly. But my friend, our spiritual traits, our spiritual shortcomings, they will pick up on. Oh, it's amazing to me how some young people come up in some very ungodly homes and yet come to know Jesus Christ and become great servants. And yet other families, we have people, moms and dads of great godliness, and they have a child or perhaps two that decides to go and live for the world for the world and for the devil. How that happens, I don't know. But my friend, I do know this. There's a woman of great faith. She's coming to Christ. Her daughter is, is demon-possessed. And my dear friend, she probably got demon-possessed because she was messing with her mom's religion. What was this woman's trouble? Her daughter was demon-possessed. What was her reaction? You know, trouble will do one of two things. It will either drive us away from God or drive us to God. This mother had turned from idols to the true and living God. She obeyed uh, the truth of 1 Thessalonians 1.9. She turned to God from idols. My friend, are you in trouble right now? Are you facing difficulty? Is your faith being tested? Is your faith going to endure, endure the test of trouble? Is your faith driving you to the feet of the cross, to the feet of the throne of grace, or driving you away and say, if God's going to allow this to happen to me, I'm not going to follow him. Oh, 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 trouble, my friend will demonstrate whether our faith is great faith or not. My friend, God may have allowed trouble in your life to bring you to a place for you to receive Christ. If you've never received him, do him today. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.